There are all kinds of companies in this world that lie somewhere along a supply chain. By that, we mean there are some companies that simply resell raw materials. Then there are those companies who buy raw materials and they manufacture them or do something with them to make a finished product. Then companies buy the finished product and they either resell that or maybe they take the finished products and put them together in yet a different configuration to sell those. You get the idea. When we're talking about this type of thing in Peachtree, we're talking about something called an assembly. An assembly is made up of other items in your inventory. It can be something that's manufactured from raw goods or simply packaged together in a unique way. You can only build as many assemblies as you have components, and it's going to be a two-step process. First, we need to define the components of the assembly, and then we need to build the assembly. In our spa, we want to go ahead and create a simple facial package that consists of the facial and a bottle of the herbal facial scrub. Now I know this is a very simple example, but it will show you how you can create an assembly and then be able to sell that assembly. In order to get started, we need to go to Maintain Inventory Items, just like we did before. So this should be a familiar form to you. I'm going to go ahead and create this deluxe facial package. First, I'm going to give it an item ID because I want it to be a little bit shorter than that description. I'll press tab and then I'll type the regular description. The next thing you need to do that makes this one different from everything else is when it comes to the item class, we do not want this to be a stock item. In fact, we don't want it to be any of the type of items at the top. We instead want to create an assembly. Now you'll see that many of the fields required for an assembly are just the same as they are for services and inventory items, but we need to do something a little bit different as well. So let's go through the general tab that we're already familiar with. We need to put in a description for sales. Then I'll press tab. Now we could sell this combination at the full retail price of the two materials put together, but usually when you do something like this, it's going to be discounted a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a price of $105. Once again, I'm not going to go through all of the different things that we need to go through because many of them are already the same. But what you notice is that we're missing a field that we saw before. Generally, between price level and cost method, we get to see our last unit cost. That's not applicable to an assembly because that's going to be configured out of the bill of materials. In other words, Peachtree already knows what we paid for the items when we brought them into inventory, so it's going to do the math behind the scenes to tell us what the actual cost of this package is when we assemble it. Likewise, we have different item types and locations. On the right-hand side, we have different accounts. I'm going to go ahead and change this one just to make sure it's accurate. And go ahead and choose our aesthetic services account. I'll leave everything else the same and now I'm going to come down to minimum stock. Now we normally said we wanted to have a minimum of five of the herbal facial products, so we're not going to have quite as many of this one put together. Let's say our minimum is going to be three. And our reorder will be at four and we won't have a preferred vendor because we're actually purchasing the items. All right, now let's go to what is different, and that is the very last tab, which is now available, called Bill of Materials. This is where we actually describe what is put together into our assembly. Now remember that this could be a variety of things. If you're actually in manufacturing, it could be all kinds of little parts, for example, to put together a bicycle or a car. In my case, I have a spa, and that doesn't mean that I don't necessarily have assemblies, they're just different. They might be things like gift baskets or special packaging of services that are going to use all the individual items we already had. So let's go ahead and add a couple items. I'll click on my item ID, and I know that I want to include the full facial, and I also know that I want to include the facial scrub. Before you move on to the bottom though, you need to tell how many of that quantity are needed for this particular assembly. We're simply going to do one of each. Now we'll choose our second item, our herb scrub, and we need one of those. You'll see that we have buttons on the right hand side where we can add and remove items as well. You will also see an important checkbox on the bottom left 
that says to print the components on the invoice. So if I want my invoices to show that this particular package is made up of a full facial and the facial scrub, I would check the box. If I don't want people to know what makes this up or what comprises it, then I would leave it off. I'm going to go ahead and show that so that you can see what it's going to look like. So as you see, this is something that's very simple to do, but here's a little hint. Be sure that you always come up and set the item class to assembly before you click save. In other words, you don't want to get started, put in an ID and a description, and save it, because if you do, it's going to default to a stock item. Just a little bit of a hint there. Now all we have to do is actually click on the Save button and close. Now that we've defined the assembly, now we actually have to build it. It's kind of like inventory. First we define what our inventory items are, then we actually have to write a purchase order or somehow add them into our inventory. This is going to be the same process. We're going to go to Tasks, but instead of working with Purchasing and Receiving Inventory, we're going to come almost all the way to the bottom and choose Assemblies. This is where I can actually build and unbuild my assemblies. Now initially, I'm going to put some of these baskets or these specials together, and that's going to take some of the items out of my inventory. Since my facial is a service, that obviously isn't going to affect inventory, but it is going to affect the herbal facial scrub. When I build an assembly, it takes it out of inventory and puts it into the assembly itself. That's why we have an unbuild option, because if you ever take it apart, or maybe I took one of those herbal scrubs out of something and put it back to sell it individually, then I need to unbuild it to get it back into inventory. I think you can see how that works. So let's start by clicking the item ID, and of course we only have one at the moment, so we'll check that. It tells us it's the deluxe facial package. We're going to build it, and then how many do we want to build? Well, let's go ahead and build five. It automatically puts in the default date, and you also can put in a reference. Now, the reference is really who did it or why did you do it, maybe something like that. Maybe you were preparing for a special conference or a trade show where you wanted to put some of these together, or maybe it's just for inventory. A common thing is to just use the date. Now we get to go ahead and move down and look at the components used in the build. Remember, this is what we already selected on the previous screen when we created the assembly. But what's happened is it's told us that the quantity required to build five of them is going to be five, and it's telling us that the quantity on hand for full facials is zero. That's okay because it's a service. It tells us that the quantity on hand of the herbal scrub is 15. Remember that you will not be able to create a build of an assembly if you don't have adequate quantity on hand to do so. So if I only had four of these herbal facial scrubs, I couldn't make five of the packages. We also can see up on the top right that we have kind of a summary, how many of the build are currently available, how many are on hand, the quantity that we're going to build, which means the new quantity on hand. So it's doing the math. Down on the bottom, you can put in a supervisor if this needed to be approved in order to be put together, and you also can put in the reason, if there was a reason that's appropriate. Neither of those are going to be required fields. So now all I have to do is save it, and like everything else in Peachtree, I can just close it out. So this actually was a very simple process to take individual items and put them together in some kind of a configuration so that I can sell them as a configuration. You can't build more than you have on hand, and it's automatically adjusting the inventory level in the background. In addition, if you have the premium version, you also can designate serialized builds and then enter serial numbers for each item assembled. So if I was building bicycles, a bicycle would probably have a serial number. Same thing for computers and cars. Not appropriate for working with facial scrubs, but you get the idea. And don't forget, if you ever need to take that item back and put it back into inventory to sell it individually, you use the same screen and simply unbuild the same way we did the build. How many do you want to unbuild? And it will do all the math in the background to return those items to inventory for us.